gee, wow, you're famous. You've written all these songs for all these famous people. What's that like? Do you get to you meet know, them all? <laughs> for the most part, yes. Um, it's, it's, it's great. I mean, I, I uh, sometimes I look back at all of the things I've done and the people I've met, and I, I can't believe it. Like, I, I'm still starstruck by, by all those names, and, and yet, I, you know, you, when, you're, when you're with them, you have to be like an equal, right? Because yeah. it, you don't want to intimidate <laughs> anybody. But certainly it's, it's, uh, it's a thrill, and it doesn't seem to stop. Um, I've been doing it since I was very young, and my background prior to writing songs for, for artists was that I was the son of a very famous film director, so I grew up in Hollywood oh. <laughs> amongst many, many famous people, including <laughs> my godfather, Jack Nicholson. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. So it, I've seen them all, and, and yeah. I've seen them all do crazy things, but it's still fun, and even when Lady Gaga or Beyonce come into my studio, uh, recently it's it's I'm st I can't believe it I'm, I'm like a kid that can't well that's what's so cool you see if you have that sense of wonder um about all the new possibilities and new things and new people I think um I think it makes it all even more amazing and lots of people become a little bit numb to um you know those magnificent things but that's great um I was wondering if you could tell me what you think about um, the blockchain and how that's going to affect the music industry generally? Do you see that there's positive possibilities or and do you think there'll Absolutely. be negative ramifications? No, no, no. I, I, I can't really think of any negative ramifications unless you're a big middleman and, and, and you're worried about losing your job. <laughs> um, and, and sure, that, that could be negative. I mean, uh, I think that there is so much innovation happening at such a fast rate that um, it's got to have a positive impact and create a whole new um, a whole new sector. Really, it's fintech, rights tech, music tech. These are all converging, and ultimately, uh, you know, it's really about whether people are willing to agree and at least come come together uh, with some sense of community standards. Yes. This, this, this is the biggest problem that we've faced, whether it be technology or strictly banking, right? Yeah. That's always been the issue. People tend to want to be in closed systems, even ASCAP and VMI and the big PROs and each of the majors. They're all a closed system. Yes. I understand there's advantages to that monetarily, that if you can quarantine monies that are difficult to claim, those then become your money, right? So, so we'll talk about this on the panel, but I do see that there are, uh, that there may be some resistance. Okay. But, but in the end, I'm hoping that people will have learned some lessons from resisting the concept of digital music to begin with, because it's those same groups that said, no, we don't want to be on iTunes, or no, we don't want streaming, or no, we don't want MP3s, that wound up losing the largest uh, income. Yes, yes. And um, really, I think that, as you said, change is going to come whether you like it or not. <laughs> and, uh, and it's best to uh, prepare and be open to what the possibilities are. I guess a person like yourself, um, with that sort of wonder, um, wide-eyed wonder, I think that is a really good um, uh, preparation for new things. Um, but also not to be blindsided by the ramifications. So as a writer, a songwriter... Uh, do you see that this will benefit you, or do you think that there'll be things that you'll need to change um, to protect yourself? Or well, well, ironically, uh, part of the reason I've I, I think I've been successful is is because I've been extremely diligent and thorough about paperwork and rights and registrations and uh. legal understandings. 
in theory, blockchain will improve that workflow, allowing people to focus more on creative. There was always a stigma whenever I would bring up the concept of legal agreements or signing a, a, a piece of paper yes. during a creative process. Yes, yeah. Uh, in theory, this can be some... I mean, I'm already doing it to some degree in beta with our DigiRAM prototype, but we're, we're from, the, from the inception of any collaboration or any creative venture, all the stakeholders um, are... Are, are instantaneously registered and maintained and can enjoy the benefits of their stakeholdings for the perpetuity of that of that copyright. Um, it's 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 people in uh, people in creative positions. Pamela, they tend not to they tend to be afraid of business in certain ways. Yeah, and I. And I want to I want to make it uh, comfortable. I've always tried to make it comfortable so that people can continue doing um, business in order to remain creative. Yeah. Because you can't get rid of the business side of things, just like you can't get rid of the creative side of things, right? That's yeah. absolutely true. Yeah. They they can be they can be more in a single workflow. Yeah. They've never really been that way. I tried to encourage people uh, to, to come up with an understanding. It can be changed later, but, but at least there is an understanding before things even began. Yes, yeah. Well, thanks so much, Peter, for this uh, little interview. I really appreciate it.